more layoffs, homeowner insurance skyrockets, and Home Depot security force with a German shepherd. Today, I read an article on Yahoo Finance put out by the Associated Press titled, Jeep Maker Stellantis to lay off an unspecified number of factory workers in the coming months. According to the author, Jeep Maker Stellantis is planning to lay off an unspecified number of workers at its U.S. factories in the coming months to deal with a rapidly changing global auto market. I'm going to stop right here for a moment and share my thoughts. This can't just be because of the rapidly changing global auto market. In my opinion, this may also have to do with inflation and wages not keeping pace. Visit any local car dealership and look at the MSRP on the window sticker of these vehicles. You will be shocked by how much new cars and trucks cost these days. Then look at the window sticker a little further and you may find that the dealership has tacked on paint protection or theft protection and it's charging extra for these add-ons which they cannot remove. Some dealerships make a huge amount of profit from these types of add-ons. Then talk to the finance office and find out what type of interest rate you'll be paying for that new expensive vehicle. Car dealerships get rates from financial institutions and then increase those rates further so they can make a profit in the finance office in addition to whatever they are making off selling the vehicle. Some people can no longer afford to buy a new vehicle because of the high prices and because we are in a higher interest rate environment. It's just not feasible for many American families anymore. My 2004 Toyota Camry has 403,000 miles on it now. I looked at a new Toyota Prius recently, which was in the low $30,000 range. I just couldn't possibly see spending that much money for a small car with cloth interior. I also didn't like the strange location of the gauge cluster in the new model. The gauges are blocked by the top of the steering wheel. I'm number two on the wait list for a 2025 Toyota Camry. The LE model starts at $29,495. I optioned out an LE with the convenience package, cold weather package, all weather floor liners, all weather trunk mat, mud guards, and the rear bumper applique, and the price rose to $31,683. That's for a front wheel drive version with no moonroof. I don't wanna pay extra for all wheel drive or a moonroof. In my mind, $31,683 is still a lot of money for an entry level Camry with cloth interior and a small screen on the dash. My 2004 Toyota Camry LE is pretty basic and I'm okay with that. Back in 2004, the Toyota Camry LE started at $19,045. We have experienced a lot of inflation since 2004 in our society. You can still get a brand new car that costs a little less than that if you are okay with driving a Nissan Versa. In 2024, the Nissan Versa starts at $16,390. I feel bad for Americans who are unable to afford a new vehicle and are forced to overpay for used vehicles at dealerships or from a private party. Many people know there is a lot of demand for used vehicles because of the sky-high prices on new vehicles, so they often are not willing to negotiate. Some people end up paying far more than they should for a depreciating liability, which could have costly repairs down the road. Getting back to the article, the author said Stellantis faces increased capital spending to make the transition from gasoline vehicles to electric autos. It also has reported declining U.S. sales in the first quarter, and it has higher costs due to a contract agreement reached last year with the United Auto Workers Union. Stellantis has about 43,000 factory workers. Here are my thoughts. I think many automakers have placed huge bets on electric vehicles and the demand just isn't there. How many of these electric vehicles are going to go unsold this year? I'll let you answer that question in the comment section below. I also think many automakers have placed huge bets on large and expensive trucks and SUVs. Again, how many of these are going to go unsold this year? I personally think there could be a lot of unsold expensive vehicles. Cox Automotive reported that Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram 
all had enough inventory to last at least 152 days or nearly half a year. That is a lot of inventory sitting on lots with brake rotors rusting away and batteries going dead. I really hope when Stellantis announces the number of people being laid off, it is not awful. My heart goes out to these 43,000 factory workers. I am sure some of them are stressed out right now, wondering if they will have a job in the near future. Some of these people probably have a mortgage, car payments, boat payments, student loan payments, credit card debt, and I have no doubt some are struggling right now to afford groceries, fuel, insurance, daycare, and a whole host of other things in life due to inflation. Imagine how their world could get turned upside down in a heartbeat if they get laid off. If you work at a factory and get laid off, there may not be another factory in your area that is hiring. What do you do at that point if you own a home? Are you going to put your home on the market and then move to a new city for another factory job? Some factories are located in areas where the plant is the main employer. If a lot of people get laid off at that plant, there may not be enough other jobs in the area for everyone, and those other jobs may not pay well either. If you are a licensed plumber and you get laid off, you can get another job at a different plumbing company, or you could start your own company. If you are a factory worker, it's not that easy. I am sure some people know this, and their level of stress is probably very high right now. Some are probably wondering how they are going to support their family in the event they get laid off. This is a terrible predicament to be in. Keep in mind, this is all happening during a time when we hear in the mainstream media that our economy is booming. I read some of the comments beneath this article. I'll share some of them with you. One person said, I'm a blue collar worker and I can't afford to buy a new gas or EV automobile. They are way too expensive. I'm going to stop right here for a moment. There was a time here in America where an auto worker could afford for his wife to stay home and take care of the kids. He could afford a new vehicle, a home in a nice area, vacations for the family each year, and get a lifetime pension with financial security during retirement. Gone are these days in America. They unfortunately are long gone. The next commenter said, layoffs are occurring for three primary reasons. Number one, too many executives with ties that are too tight around their necks and thereby limiting and or cutting off oxygen supply to their brain, which in turn leads to many dumb ideas. Number two, prices are way too high. Number three, lack of quality control. What do you think about all this? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. I read another interesting article today. This one was on Yahoo Finance, put out by Benzinga, and written by Janine Mancini, titled, Susie Orman decided to drop homeowner's insurance after an outrageous quote of $28,000 for a 2,100 square foot condo. Are you kidding me? The author of this article said, Susie Orman faced a $28,000 annual insurance quote for a Florida Oceanside condo, so she decided to forego coverage entirely. Well, she must not have a mortgage to be able to do that. I know a guy who self-insures his condo in Florida. He refuses to pay the high cost of insurance anymore. You are certainly taking a risk by doing this, but I understand his frustration and Susie Orman's frustration. I feel bad for everyday people in Florida and other states in America who have been blindsided by the high cost of insurance in recent years. Some people probably thought their mortgage payment with a fixed interest rate would never go up. Well, surprise, your insurance went up and now your escrow got depleted and you have to make up for the shortage. I feel bad for families who are being impacted by this. This may mean no family vacation this year. This may mean no more dining out on the weekends. I am sure some families have had to cut back to deal with how expensive insurance has gotten. Think about the ripple effect this will have throughout the economy. I'm curious if any of you have seen your insurance costs go up in the past year or two. If you have, tell me about it in the comment section below. I have to wonder if some people are resorting to crime to deal with inflation. I read an article today on foxbusiness.com written by Stefan Soros, titled, Security Guards Patrolling New York Home Depot to Deter Thieves, Aggressive Migrants, Report. 
The author of this article referenced a New York Post report that revealed two guards wearing MSA security caps with a German shepherd were patrolling a Home Depot parking lot in a New York City suburb on Tuesday. One of the guards was quoted by the New York Post as saying, it's not just because of migrants, but because of a myriad of other things too, like people breaking into cars, that kind of stuff. Here are my thoughts. I am sure Home Depot wants to keep its parking lot safe so people will keep shopping there. However, it would give me an eerie feeling if I pulled in and saw security guards with an attack dog out front. It's kind of like going to some malls that have these trailers that have generators mounted on them to power bright white lights, security cameras, and blinking blue lights to alert people of the security recording in progress. The first time I saw one of these in a parking lot, I asked myself if I should really be going into the store. Maybe I should just visit a store in a different location. I wonder if Home Depot has given this line of thinking any consideration. I understand they want to keep their store safe and they want to deter crime, but what they are doing could backfire and scare some customers away. I guess this is just a sign of the times here in America in some areas. What do you think about all this? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. Please keep in mind that everything in this video is for entertainment purposes only, and nothing in this video is financial advice or advice of any kind. If you need advice, seek advice from a qualified professional in good standing who puts your interests first and foremost. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to the channel. Please also consider sharing this video with your friends. I want to extend a special thanks to everyone who has subscribed to this channel. I want to also thank all of my channel members. Check out some of the great books that I suggest you consider reading in the description below. I've included Amazon affiliate links to these books. As an Amazon associate, I earn from qualifying purchases. Stay healthy and wealthy. I'll see everyone in the next video.